Hello, my name is Felipe Gavilan, and in this video, we are going to see a new feature of C Sharp 12, and that is primary constructors. Primary constructors will allow us to write more concise classes because they will allow us to remove unnecessary code. Let's see that. Let me create a new project. I'll create a console app here, double click. I'll call it primary constructors and next .NET 8 and create. All right, so here we are. Let me go to the solution explorer. I want to create a new class. Right click on the project, add class. I'll call it distance, distance, enter. All right, so what I will do first is to write this class without using primary constructors so that we can see the difference. So let's say that in this distance class, I want to have a constructor, a normal constructor, and I will pass double X and double Y, and I want to say control dot because I want to assign all of these parameters as fields of this class. So enter here, and as you can see, we have this here, and now I can use these values in any method I have. For example, let me say that I want to have public double magnitude and let me return math square root this is the distance formula y times y and then public double direction we're going to use the inverse tangent math arc tangent to y over x all right so as you can see this is a pretty simple class but it has a lot of line of code how can we abbreviate this well we can do it in the following manner. Let me say here, without primary constructor, and then in here, I will say with primary constructor. All right, so let me do this again, but in a more concise manner. So let me come here, and let me say public class distance two, I'll just call it like that. And here, in order to use primary constructors, I have to put a parenthesis here, and then I will say double x, double y and that's it with this we're using primary constructors of course i'm not using them i'm just declaring them but it is important to note that these are parameters these are not fields these are not properties these are parameters that we can use throughout the definition of the class so for example i can come here and say public double magnitude i can use magnitude here and i can use a lambda expression math square root square root x times x plus y times y and i can do the same here public double direction and then i can just copy this formula from here and paste it here and as you can see we're doing exactly the same as in this class that we have here but this is much concise we only have basically three lines of code the definition of the class magnitude and direction and that's it and of course you can use this distance to class in the same way that you can use this distance class for example let me go to the program class let me remove this from here and i will say distance equal to new distance to i will use distance to which is the one that uses the primary constructor and as you can see this is a normal class this is a normal instantiation of a class i can pass three and four for example and then i can say here console right line let me use a string interpolation. The distance is, and let me say here, distance magnitude. Semicolon here, console F5 to run our application. And you are going to see that we get back the expected result, which is five, of course. Now we can use primary constructors in a way quicker manner. We can transform our current classes so that they can use primary constructors very easily. I did it here by hand, but we can do it automatically. For example, let me click on here, control dot, use primary constructor and remove fields. Let me say enter. And as you can see, in less than a second, I transformed this class from using a classic constructor into one that uses a primary constructor. I can do something similar to this magnitude method. I want it to be a property. So control dot, use expression body. And then after that, control dot one more time and replace magnitude with property. And as you can see, in a really quick manner, I can transform this into a property. Okay, it did it 
as a property directly here, great. And as you can see, it was very fast. It was very easy for me to transform this from using a classic constructor into a class that uses a primary constructor. So let me delete this because we have basically the same code twice. Now, something that I want to mention is that, again, these are parameters. But what C# does is that behind the scenes, during compilation time, these are stored in a private field if it is needed. Now, something else that we can do is to modify these values. And again, we have access to these values through how the whole definition of the class. For example, let me say public void translate, because we want to move these values from one place to the other. So I'll say delta x, delta means change, basically. So double delta y, and then let me say x plus equal delta x, semicolon, and the same here, plus equal delta y. All right, so with this, I can modify these parameters of the primary constructor that we have here. So let's see that. Let's come here. Let me come here and say distance, translate, and I will say one and two, and then I will copy this and paste it here, and I will say the new distance is magnitude. Control F5 to run that application, and let me see here that we have five and 7.2. Now, something that I want to warn you before continuing with the next example, is that you have to be careful and when you use a property, you have to use a lambda expression here instead of an equal if you want this value to be recalculated, recomputed. Why is that? Because when we use equal, then this is an initializer. It is a fixed value. It doesn't change even though the X and the Y changes. For example, if I put an equal sign here instead of a lambda operator, then we're going to get a fixed value for magnitude. Let's see that. Control F5. And we're going to see that in here we have the distance is 5 and the new distance is also 5. Why? Because if I use an equal sign, then this value will not change. But if I use a lambda operator, then Control F5 one more time and you're going to see that now the value changes, as you can see here. Now, the final example that I want to show you is that we can have several constructors, but with a rule that every new constructor must refer to the primary constructor by using the this keyword. Let's see that. Let me put here, let's say that I want to be able to instantiate this class without passing any parameters. So we want a parameterless constructor. Let me say ctor here, and we have here our parameterless constructor, but I need to use the this keyword column here, this, because I need to pass values to the primary constructor. With this, with this, this that we have here, we're passing these two values into these parameters that we have here. And with this, I'm able to come here and say, for example, distance two equal to new distance. And now as you can see, we have two constructors available, the new parameterless constructor and the primary constructor that we have been working so far. If you want to learn more about C Sharp, buy my Udemy course today. I have courses on C Sharp, React and ASP.NET Core, concurrency in C Sharp, and more. Link with a discount to all of my courses in the description of this video. Thank you.